Take your Bibles, please, and turn to Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Thank you, Pastor. The... Word of God here is giving us some hope in the Lord. He started out with his struggles. I want you to see, first of all, the problems. The problems, an ungodly nation, deceitful and unjust men. He said, Lord, we need you to deliver us from this. And we see America as an ungodly nation tonight. I am praying that God will touch the hearts of people and make it a difference this this coming election. But all of us know It's going to take nothing short of the mighty hand of God to be able to overcome what we've gotten ourselves into. We've got problems today that only God can help us with. I... uh, normally can wear some glasses that are tinted, but not this dark. But I'm in a pain cycle I just can't seem to break out of. And it's just causing me a lot of difficulty. I apologize I've been such a bother to some of your dear people. And, well... Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. I want to tell you of a lady that I sat next to on airplane. She had two PhDs. I know because she told me. (laughs) And God set her right next to the dumbest preacher in America. And the woman lost it. She is really getting mad. I struck up a conversation to witness to her. And she is so mad when she speaks to me. Spit is coming out of her mouth and hitting me in the side of my face. I tell you, the woman was in bad shape. Now here's why she was so mad at me. It wasn't because I believe in God. No, she didn't mind me believing in God. And it wasn't because I believed in Jesus Christ. That was all right with her too. But what she didn't like was when I said that God made one door in heaven and that door was Jesus Christ. And the only way to get to God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. That angered her, but that is the truth. What I'm telling you is the truth. 
And that's why we need missionaries and soul winners and gospel tracts and everything we can to bring people Jesus Christ. Well, she said to me, what right does Jesus have to exclusivity? Well, now that was a big word I hadn't learned. My Donna never sat me down and said, now exclusivity is a word you need to know, John. I said, ma'am, if you'll define to me what that word means, I'll try to answer it for you. She said, exclusivity is somebody that has sole right to say something that nobody else can say. The one and only. Oh, I said, ma'am, I know the answer to that one. I said, Jesus, when he walked here on the earth, he lived and walked among his disciples and peoples and multitudes. And he told them that he would die. But three days later, he would get out of the grave. And I said, ma'am, when you can get out of the grave when you say you will, you make your own rules. <laughs> she was really frustrated with me. She said, oh, I bet you're one of those that believe God made the world in seven days. I said, no, ma'am, he did it in six. He rested on the seventh. <laughs> Well, I didn't get real far with her. <laughs> but I'm glad I serve a God that loves me. And I'm glad that I have people like you folks. I thank you men for sharing with me that I was a blessing to you. I appreciate it. We do live in a day and age of problems. And... We're facing them in America so greatly. Oh, that God might help us to realize that we need Him to plead our cause against an ungodly nation. Only God can do that. And He says, For thou art God of my strength, why dost thou cast me off? He felt as though God had cast him off. When you're depressed, things don't look as they would normally. In the back table back there, I have one book called The Happy Book. And it deals with what biblical happiness is. We are to have joy, and that is most important, is having joy. But according to Jesus, when he washed feet disciples, he says, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So we can also know true happiness. I'd encourage you to get it. You say, well, I'm happy as I want to be. Maybe you're not as happy as you need to be. <laughs> and I'm telling you, God is the only one can give us true happiness. When we have a servant spirit, the happiest people I know are those serving God with a servant spirit. That's the problems. Then the answer, if you'll notice there in verse 3, O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. The answer to our problems is found, number one, with the Lord, and number two, in the house of God. God has always had a place for his people to worship. 
And that's so important that we might worship the Lord truly in whole, with our whole spirit. And I thank the Lord. He gives grace. Yes, He can tell us no. I don't know why people get mad at God for doing something every one of them have done. And that is tell a child no that doesn't understand it, yet you expected them to obey, even though they didn't understand. You told child no. If you never told child no, I don't want to meet the little brat. But God gives us his answers when he brings us to that holy hill and to his tabernacles. Holiness is important to God. It really is. You can never be too holy for the Lord. Now, if you get a holier-than-thou attitude, God can smack you down pretty easy if you're not careful. But we need to be a holy people. Our minds and our hearts set on the Lord. My Donna taught me a thing called etiquette. And I was in a motel... And the, in the bottom floor of that motel was a restaurant. The pastor had me there and my Donna wasn't with me this time and I was going, they told me just go down and eat breakfast and sign your name to the room you're in and we'll take care of those meals. So that's what I did. I got done eating my breakfast and the lady said, is there anything else? And I told the waiters, yes, I'd like another cup of hot chocolate. I don't care for coffee, but I do love hot chocolate. And so she went and got it. I moved my plate forward and I set it right there on the edge. When she grabbed my plate and lifted it up, it just whisked the side of that cup and that hot chocolate went right to my lap. I did the first thing I could think of. I took my ice water and poured on top of it. That's how you put out a fire. <laughs> she went, oh, and I did too, but a different reason. <laughs> Well, after about two towels of trying to clean up the mess, I told her I thought I had enough. I'd go to the room then. And I'm starting out of that room. I didn't have a jacket or I would have put it around my waist. And I was wearing khaki pants. So I was a mess. And I noticed this lady coming in she had not learned the etiquette my Donna taught. She was staring at me. And I thought to myself, I probably ought to say something to the lady. About the time we passed each other, I said, I had an accident. <laughs> she said, I reckon. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That was a mess. I walked out of there with ice water and hot cocoa dripping out of both legs. But I tell you this, God is with me as I travel. Now my Donna has to travel with me because I'm just not able to do some things. And... I appreciate her so much doing that. She sacrifices a lot. And 
she loved me and I love her dearly. Then I want you to see the results. In verse 4, he said, Then will I go unto altar of God. Then will I go unto altar of God. The Every church ought to have invitations where people can come forward. Number one, come forward to get saved. If you're here tonight and you're not sure you're saved, you need to come forward at the end of this message and let somebody take a Bible and show you how you can know you're going heaven. Because you can know that. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can know it. And don't let anybody tell you you can't know it. It's also a time for Christians to come forward and pour their heart out to God. It'd be a good thing for several of us to come and gather around the altar tonight and pray about this upcoming election. Amen. That God's will be done. Oh, I want the will of God to be done. So desperately do I want it to be done. And praying for our nation is probably one of the most powerful things that we can do. Now, he says, Unto God my exceeding joy, yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Isn't that wonderful? He didn't just say God, but he said my God. Salvation is a personal thing. You come to the Lord and you know He's your God. And everybody ought to have three homes. One is a heavenly home. Everybody ought to have a heavenly home. The second is an earthly home where there's joy and happiness that dwell within. And the third home is a church home. Everybody ought to have a home where they can say, that's where I belong. That's my pastor. Those are my people. And God can bless you for that. If you don't have a church home, you do what God says. Here, and it says in verse 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. He's not going to give up just because things are bad. He's not going to do it. And I thank the Lord that the Lord will help us like that and give us grace and strength. I remember one time after my illness, I came out of our bathroom. We live in a double-wide mobile home with real brick underpinning. And we have two bathrooms. My Donna and I have our bathroom. And I came out of there one day and she said, Boy, you smell good. What'd you put on? I said, I didn't put anything on. 
She said, you must have because you smell good. She walked in the bathroom and where normally my hairspray sat was the room deodorant. I smelled like a pine tree. <laughs> but ladies, I wouldn't change if I were you. It doesn't hold worth anything. And one day I got in the shower and I put the shampoo in my hand and rub it on my head, but there was no bubbles. I knew shampoo's supposed to bubble. So I put some more on there and thought, maybe I just need some extra. Still no bubble. I gave up, put it back. I got out and I said, Donna, this shampoo in here shot. It won't bubble. She came in and found out that was her body oil. <laughs> I look like Elvis Presley. <laughs> it took some washing to get that out of there, too. I tell you, it did. I know this. No matter what God allowed me go through, there's always hope in the Lord. There's always hope. And I hope tonight if you're here and you feel downcast, you feel forsaken, that you'll just turn to the Lord and with all your heart just pour it out to Him and say, Lord, please be with me. Please help me. He said to thine altar, O Lord. I tell you, Churches that God use, use the altar. I don't know how long ago it's been since you've been to an old-fashioned altar to pray. But you ought to come regularly and faithfully. When I home and pastor preaching, rarely does a service go by that I don't come to the altar to get closer to the Lord. I heard one preacher friend of mine put it this way, the fire of God rarely falls on an empty altar. And I believe that true. If you want the fire of God to fall on your churches, and I do appreciate Brother Dennis bringing some of his people that a blessing. I'm glad these two men are friends, aren't you? Amen. We're not in competition with each other. We're out to reach people that only God can give to us. And I've known Brother Dennis for years now. I knew him when he was in Louisiana. I put him on a prayer list that I have of preachers and evangelists and missionaries. And I prayed for him when he was on the mission field. I've been continued to pray for him when he was out here in California. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, unless I'm traveling or very ill, I mention his name in prayer to God Almighty. And I'll have Brother Rogers on my prayer list too when I get back home and pray for him. But let's use the altar tonight. Unashamedly. You say, well, people might think bad of me. Humble yourself and come anyhow. One thing that using an old-fashioned altar does, it helps you humble yourself. 
And when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He'll lift you up. He'll exalt you in due time. That's so important. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for my Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you will help each and every one of us. And Lord, I'm going to start myself out. I'm up here. Lord, I'm putting myself on the altar tonight. We're an ungodly nation that needs you desperately tonight. We have people around us that don't care for you and people around us that don't know you or love you. Please use us here tonight to spark a revival in both of these churches and the Lord would use to reach out to multitudes of people. Lord, that my prayer. Please bless. I'm turn over to the pastor.